Okay, guys, I'm going to try not to screw this one up. Uh, welcome to Toy Talk with Mike and Chad, episode 20. I'm Chad. And I'm Mike. And the part of our collections we're going to be talking about today are more of Mike's toys. More of my stuff. Yeah, we're shooting this episode back to back with the episode we posted a few days ago. Still December 12th. Still December 12th as we sit here and shoot this. And as Chad mentioned in that video, his uh, family have banned him from buying any toys this month so they can buy him Christmas presents. And birthday. And birthday presents, yeah. yes. It's your birthday. On Saturday the 17th. Yeah. Saturday the 17th. So, he's not allowed to get any new toys. Nobody has given me such a rule. So, I've had enough, I bought myself enough toys to shoot two full videos worth. So, I shared a bunch of stuff in my last video. This video, I'm going to talk about my new Marvel Legends. Oh, if I carry through you. Yes. Since it's your birthday, in a couple of days. Oh, God. This is me wrapping uh, a present. So, I, and my house is full of wrapping paper right now, but I was just too damn lazy to wrap it. Oh, dear. So, anyway, since I, I don't know if I'll, after today, I don't know if I'll see you before Christmas. I, you know, I'm probably available if you want to hang out, but I don't know. I do have a fairly busy family thing, and I don't know how busy your family life gets. It's up in the air right yeah. now, yeah. Anyway, so happy oh, birthday, buddy. Thank you. Oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. That's super cool. Is it, though? It's a Batman. It is. It's he... a Bugs Bunny Batman from Space Jam. Yep. So, that was, was a dollar store find. Hey. Um, so that's super cool. Yeah, when I picked up my Spinosaurus, as seen in the last episode, I saw this Bugs Bunny dressed as Batman, and I thought, "Well, yeah, there you go." Thank you so much. You didn't have to do that. You're welcome. And now this: Am I a nice guy? Am I a dick? Because I didn't give Chad the heads up. But I've got your Christmas present here too. Oh, sweet baby Jesus! So, you want your Christmas present? <clears throat> sure. Do you but, want me to open it, or would you like me to wait? Well, whatever. You can open it. We're here. So, I don't know if that's particularly exciting or not. That is very exciting. Thank you. You're welcome. So, I got the Arkham City Batman. So now I have Razzle Ghoul and Batman. So I have half of Solomon Grundy build. Yeah. Thank you so much. So that's the thing. Several episodes ago, you talked about one of your most wanted yeah. DC figures was Solomon Grundy, that big, beefy dude down here. And then he was the build a figure, like it was announced like right afterwards. Yeah. And so then you came over here the other week and you had Raza Ghoul, and you're like, "This is the only one I've seen for sale so far. I haven't seen the other three figures I need." And I told you, I think I've seen them, and I have seen all three. They are available. Okay. So if you're Sister or your brother are still looking for something for you. You might want to steer them towards it because you need two more pieces to finish. Thank you. Raz Ed Will. So I thought, like, well, it's another Batman. It's going to be like Chad's like probably fortieth Batman of the year. So I don't know how. Uh, no, this is this is one of my favorite Batman storylines, the Arkham games. So yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. It's super cool and nice. There you go. I knew you hadn't had you hadn't got to enjoy anything. I, this I month. know it's. <laughs> It's driving me crazy. Like, this is probably the longest I've gone without yeah. buying something. We're only 12 days in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's coming, though, right? We're only, like, so there's 13 days out. Um, all right. Should we get into these Marvel Legends? Let's do the Legends. Okay. So this might be... Cool. I've got, I think, six of them here. All right. So this one here, this is uh, not a new figure. I think this guy came out last year. Mm -hmm. Um, but so this guy was on one of the like Marvel retro cards. Yep. Um, so this is Loki, obviously. Um, comic fans would know that right away. But if you only know the movies, you might think, "What is you know? This doesn't look like what's his what's his name?" Uh, I can't even remember it right now. Uh, the heartthrob that plays yeah. Loki. Um, I never, from how I see Loki in the comic books, I never would have guessed they would have cast. Somebody that would become a heartthrob to play him in live action because he's never struck me as a very heartthrobby type no. of guy. He looks like kind of this goofy little impish dude. And uh, this is the kind of Loki I wanted. I um, love the smile. Yeah, he's got an alternate head too, actually, with, uh, well, 
I'll just show you. I'll show you guys in a close-up insert. But it's <clears throat> smaller horns yeah. and a little bit more of a stern expression. Yeah. No, I definitely like the sinister smile. I like the sinister smile, and I also like the bigger, more exaggerated yeah. horns. So uh, yeah, this is a nice comic book classic, Loki. Um, and yeah, so when it first came out, it wasn't worth whatever the thirty-five bucks to me. Um, because I do have an MCU Loki, and he's never been one of my favorite characters, so it wasn't like a must-have. But uh, Strange Adventures, my comic shop, had a 75% off sale, so I went and got him for, he cost me about $7. So, nice. hard to argue with that. Yeah, that was at the Sidekick store, right? That's, yes. Yeah. You can see he's got the two little daggers yeah. with some like Asgardian carvings on the blades and stuff. Like, the body is pretty simple. Like, it's it's such a basic body and all the detail mm -hmm. is painted on. Like, I think his shorts are supposed to be like chain mail and stuff, but rather than sculpted chain mail, it's just drawn on as a pattern. The only thing that annoys me about this figure is the neck piece. The neck piece like, kind of floats around, but... I'm If he's standing. Yeah, if he's standing. Even if you were playing with him, it's not yeah. like it's floating around that much. Um, and at least it doesn't hinder the articulate. If it was glued down, it might block his that arms a little bit. more annoying, but yeah. No. That's a super cool figure. Um, I didn't know too much about Loki until the MCU, so... Yeah. Uh, pretty neat. Yeah, he's pretty cool. So here's a closer look at Loki, and it's a perfectly fine figure. It looks like Loki from the comics, especially the comic books of like the 70s and 80s. This is how I know Loki when I think of him. So I was happy to get him in his kind of more iconic outfit even if it is kind of a silly outfit and uh the figure's fine but it's uh there's nothing great about it like for example you know he's got this extra belt accessory that they've added here essentially but otherwise like the rest of his body here from the boots to the gloves like you know there's no ridge sculpted for those um the chain mail as i mentioned before that's just painted on there with that little pattern so you could reuse this body again and again for characters like Spider-Man or even the Silver Surfer or somebody because it's just completely smooth with no real enhanced detail other than the belt. And then, of course, they've given him this collar here, which we talked about. And you can see how that kind of floats around a little awkwardly. So as long as he's standing still, it doesn't really make much of a difference. Um, and it does allow him to lift his arms fully without getting in the way. But I think they probably could have found a way to attach that and so it wasn't so awkward. And there's the head sculpt. So a really nice head sculpt. You can see that like really kind of evil smile that me and Chad were talking about. And then I really like the horns on there. And then uh, he's holding the two knives that he came with as accessories. And I mentioned that they had some kind of carvings on them, which I assume was supposed to be like Asgardian writing or something. So there's like some symbols and stuff carved onto the blade. So yeah, not too shabby. Now, just a couple of quick comparisons. So, for the chain mail there, one way they could have enhanced this figure is if they treated it more like this Captain America figure. So, you can see here, he's got that chain mail, but that's all sculpted. You can run your finger over that, and you can feel the chain mail where it's all sculpted onto his armor. So, you know, they, I have other Captain Americas where they just did this and just painted the lines, but this here is much more effective, and it feels like a more quality figure. So I think they definitely could have done that with Loki here. Now my other, my only other Loki in my Marvel Legends collection is this guy here. And uh, I wouldn't have even bought this figure probably, but I think I had to get a, a build a figure, so which is why I bought this guy. I can't even remember now which fi which uh, figure I was building, but regardless, like it's not a bad figure. It's a well constructed figure, and I think objectively, like this is a cooler outfit for Loki. It makes a lot more sense for a guy from Asgard to wear this kind of like layered armor with real boots with buckles and stuff on it. It just doesn't look like the comic book Loki I grew up with. This one does, which is why I kind of wanted to, I guess, replace. Like, it's not like this guy's going to go in storage or anything. I can look at these two figures and enjoy them both on my shelf as comic book Loki and cinematic universe Loki. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Not so much a replacement, but I definitely needed a comic book Loki. He is an important character. You know, he's the villain that brought the Avengers together, not just in the movie, but also in the comic books way back in the 60s. And, 
yeah, there's not much more to say, I guess, other than I can show you the other head. So you can see here, this one's got more of a, I don't know, disappointed expression. And the horns aren't nearly as pronounced. If you see the two horns together, I like these ones here, the big horns, and I also like the, the evil sneer that he's got. But both are pretty good. So anyway, that's uh, Loki. Now this next one is one of the least exciting figures I bought this year, I would say. So this is Moonstone. Do you know her? Vaguely, but I remember you telling me about this figure before you bought it. And Well, that's because it was one of those things that like Hasbro revealed that was coming out. And I was like, oh, where is this going to fit in? Is it going to be another wave of villains we don't know about? Is it going to be in some sort of box set with the other Thunderbolts? Because she's a member of the Thunderbolts team. But uh, she's just one of these weird random figures that just showed up on its own. Like it may, I don't know if it's a Walgreens exclusive in the States, but it just showed up at GameStop here in Canada all by itself. Like, not part of a wave. So I'm like, okay. So I picked her up. She's a character that I needed. I don't have her yeah. in my collection. And that is what she looks like in the comic books. I mean, it's it's cool. The uniform costume, um, the skies, whatever you want to call it, doesn't do it for me. Um, it's just too white. Yeah. Like... There's like, very little color on it. When I posted on Instagram, somebody said it looks like she was dressed up as a boiled egg. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, kind of. I missed that comment, but that's hilarious. Um, little tramp stamp of a Thunderbolts. Yeah. Or light, I, lightning bolt, sorry, on the back. But that's the, like she's part of the Thunderbolts team. Yeah. The Thunderbolts logo is like a bolt of lightning. Yeah. And I, I don't know if that's actually accurate to the comic books, because I don't remember seeing it in the comic books. But like, she's got this weird little tramp stamp of the Thunderbolts logo and on her uniform and I was like that's weird that they put that there uh, I mean also nice butt though like very pronounced buttocks yeah. very very pronounced um, tight pants tight pants yeah I mean it's it's cool but the color scheme is just too, too well, yeah, she's got she's got like a nice head sculpt mm -hmm. um, I like that she has an alternate set of hands because like I find a lot of female figures that give them they, these like hands these where they're weird... just doing these <laughs> And you can't really do much with those. Like yeah. it's good. It's good, I guess, for Scarlet Witch if she's casting spells Spell. or something. But still, I'd rather than if you're going to give me those hands, give me closed fists or gripping hands so they can hold a gun or something. So she's got two fists and two, you know, magic hands. Or because her, I don't even. Her power is, I think, she shoots beams out of her hands. It's one of those kind of like. I would have figured lightning. Bolts. No, like, and I don't know if I would have preferred her other costume. Because, like, do you know the, the gist of the Thunderbolts at all? Like, So, when the team first came about, they did this storyline uh, many years ago, like back in the 90s, I think, when the Avengers and the Fantastic Four uh, died, supposedly. They were fighting uh, Onslaught, I think. If you're yeah. familiar with Onslaught, he's like an X-Men villain. So, Onslaught killed them. And so then there was this vacuum in the Marvel Universe, like, oh no, who is going to be our new government-sanctioned hero? Because, you know, Spider-Man's kind of this menace and X-Men are sketchy mutants. And so then this new team of, like, you know, will be your new government-friendly, you know, super team. And so the first issue of Thunderbolts came out. You met all these new characters that you never heard of before. You're like, okay, cool. But then on the last page, they get back to their headquarters and they reveal they're actually the masters of evil in disguise. And they're doing this to, like, win over the public's goodwill. And then they're going to do this big betrayal and then the storyline kind of got good when some of them actually liked doing good and they liked, you know, they, they wanted to actually turn into good guys and some of them didn't want to. So, like, the leader was Baron Zemo. Uh, the yes. Beetle was in it. Like, so there's a bunch of, like, known villains. And Moonstone was one of them. So Moonstone's original costume when she was, like, a known villain was, like, a yellow suit. And then she had, like, a metal kind of bullet-shaped helmet on her head. And it was, it was it's kind of stupid looking, yeah. but at least it was a little bit more unique and interesting than this. So then when she uh, kind of had her superhero look, um, she had a different a different look than this, but this is, uh, she eventually kind of evolved into this costume, and I don't know, it is just a really bland costume. I don't know what it's specific. It's a nice head sculpt, nice figure, I guess, overall, but just really bland. I mean, yeah, if, if the costume was any different color... Be yeah. super nice, but or it's just a 
boots and a belt. Now, mind you, like that's not how she looked in the comic books. I don't want them to start making things up on the toy. Right. I want it comic book accurate. So it's not a fault of the designers at Marvel Legends. Mm-hmm. It's a des- it's a fault of the guys, the artists at Marvel that couldn't come up with anything more interesting for her than a vague yellow blob. It's a tramp stamp. And a tramp stamp. So here's a closer look at Moonstone in her boiled egg outfit. And I think you guys can probably see everything that me and Chad were talking about. Like, it's a nice figure in that the head sculpt, I guess, is kind of the draw here. It's a really nice head sculpt. But otherwise, it's like Loki in that there's nothing on this body that really stands out. There's no cut for a boot. There's no extra embellishments or design. No fancy collar. No line for the gloves. The gloves are just a painted line. The logo on here, which is a weird logo. It's just kind of an exclamation point of some sort or a balloon. I don't know. It's uh, it's not very interesting. And, you know, you could use this body over again for, you know, any female in full tights or even, you know, a girl that was mostly just, you know, skin, which is not uncommon in superheroes um, because it's just so... You know, lacking in detail. Um, you can see on the back there, there's her pronounced buttocks that Chad was enjoying. And then there's the little uh, Thunderbolt logo there. So just oddly placed on her tramp stamp costume. So yeah, the head sculpt there is all there really is to talk about. If anything, it looks a little too pleasant because Moonstone is kind of an asshole character. And, uh, you know, I think this is an original head sculpt. It's possible... They, uh, you know, repainted a Captain Marvel or something like that. But I think this is original. So, in which case, I'm kind of surprised they wouldn't have given us a little bit more of an evil... Maybe not even an evil sculpt. Like, she doesn't have to be sneering exactly. But maybe just her eyebrows, you know, arched a little bit more to show that she's an evil character. Because here, she looks kind of heroic. Not just in the colors, but in the sculpt. And then for accessories, like I said, all she had was a couple extra hands. So she has two hands like this. And two hands... Like this, in closed fists. So I've opted to display her with one of each. But otherwise, I think that's pretty much all I have to say about Moonstone. So I got another guy here. This was an Amazon exclusive. And I was worried I wasn't going to get him. And I really didn't think I'd get him before the end of this year. Because sometimes those Amazon exclusives, they pop up and they're only available. And then you see somebody post it on Facebook, like, it's up again. And then everybody goes, yeah, it, and, and it's, then it's gone. gone. And then you're like, okay, well, I guess I have to wait till it pops up again. And uh, it's like whack-a-mole. And uh, so this thing has only been out for a little while, and I missed it the first once or twice it popped up. And I was like, all right, hopefully I get it eventually. Anyway, somebody posted it on Black Friday, and I actually got it for cheaper. Like, it was like 10 bucks off, so I got it for like $24 or so. Nice. Um, so this here is Gore. Oh, yes. So this is a relatively modern Thor villain. He is known as Gore the God Butcher. He was created by Jason Aaron, the writer. Um, and I can't remember who was drawn it at that particular time. It's escaping me. But uh, And this is the comic book. Yeah, so you might actually know who this is. Unless you were a hardcore comic book guy, you wouldn't have known who this guy was. But Christian Bale just played him in the latest live-action Thor movie, Love and Thunder. Now, you can see here, maybe not so well right now, but when I do an insert of him, you'll see his face. It's like... People say he looks like Voldemort, which it's pretty hard. Uh, to, it's pretty hard to argue with that, because yeah. he, he is a, just a white alien with no nose. And so my understanding was is that, like they could have done makeup to look make a uh, Christian Bale look like that, but they're like we don't want people to just say he looks Copyright like Voldemort. Copyright infringement, probably. Yeah, or just the familiarity, the instant like association. So they went with a different look. He was still a mostly naked white guy with robes draped over yeah. him. Uh, it's just the face, not just the lack of nose, but he also has like that Bib Fortuna head. I was just about to call him Voldemort Tuna. Yeah. So they lost his most distinguishing features, the head and the lack of nose. Anyway, I really liked that character in the comic book. Um, the movie version, he's okay. He did a little, he, his mood swings kind of, he swung too much. He was, he was sometimes a little too goofy. And just the tone of the movie was kind of like that in general. But anyway... I considered buying the Christian Bale Gore figure just because I wanted Gore in my collection. Mm -hmm. And I thought the chances of them making a comic book accurate Gore were slim to none. And then, like, then he popped up. There we go. And here he was. So, uh, 
I uh, I was stoked to get him, especially for sale, and I think he's awesome. I, I really like that figure. I don't know too much about him because I didn't read Thor. Um, and by the way, he does I, have an ultimate cloaked head, which is pretty cool too. That is super cool. That makes him look less like Bib Fortuna Definitely. and a little more like Voldemort. And he also has an alternate hand because you see that the yeah he's kind of got like a venom symbiote almost open. So he's got a sword that forms right over his hand. Um, but you can give him a hand without the sword as well. So he does have a few alternate parts there, which... I think this is a cool figure. Um, one thing I will say is, like, the cape doesn't fit properly. It would have been a good opportunity to have a soft, like, felt cape or whatever material they use. Yeah. Um, on this guy, but it's the thing with him. Like I would agree with you, but you see how his cape, like he does, kind of have a. Sim- it's not really a material cape. It's not. So if they went with like a felt, it would have been a little weird because I think it's supposed to be kind of an oozing living. Ink. Yeah, that's fair. So, yeah, a lot of that's probably my arrogance of the character too. So, but I it does to... fit awkwardly around. Yeah, because it's a cape. It's a full wrap around his neck, and then it's got two pieces that drape in front of him. It's kind of an awkward piece if you were going to play with it. It does kind of swish, it swishes around. It kind of gets in the way. And... But we don't play with our toys. We collect them and display them. Yep. But, uh, yeah, this guy, he's definitely... Uh, he's super cool. Yeah, like, just... I shouldn't really get into this because I'm, I'm going to spoil my next uh, best of the year video. But, like, of these three we just looked at, Loki won't qualify for the list because... he's, he's last year. He's a last year figure. Uh, Moonstone... Won't qualify because she's so boring. And Gore definitely will be qualified. Like he, I really like that figure. I yeah. think he's really well executed, despite the uh, the cloak being you know could have maybe been done better and everything. But like yeah, the the fact that he's got the two heads, the two different looks, mm-hmm. uh, and that sword hand, I really think is cool. Uh, I really like his his feet. I like he's got big weird weird feet. You and the feet again. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. No, I I think this is super cool. Um, Definitely nice sculpting detail on there. And I'm a big fan of like alternate looks, so mm. that hooded yeah. head looks great. And that's how he came in the package with the hood. And I really liked it, and I kind of thought that's probably how I'm going to display him. But then when I took pictures of him for my Instagram, and I changed up the heads. And once I got that head on, I was like, I kind of like this head. It's, it's cool. I If I was to have him, I would display him with the cape head. But mm. this look is just fine. Yeah, because there's nothing wrong with Big Fortuna. Or Voldemort. Yep. So here is a closer look at Gore. And uh, I didn't really mention it with the last figure, but you'll see Loki when I showed you the little cut in of the packaging. Loki was on one of the retro cards, so it looks like one of the old 90s figures. But you'll see here with both Moonstone and with Gore, they've got the new plastic lists packaging from Hasbro so they're in a solid box with just a picture of the action figure on the box and uh, so yeah you kind of just have to trust that the paint apps on the figure and everything are done well you know you can't sit there and look at all the different gores in in the store and pick the best one so uh, I don't we've talked about that a bunch on this channel I don't really think it's a big deal I buy most of my toys online so I don't really have a chance to do the comparisons in store I know it really bothers some people and I've read of a lot of people online saying they've quit collecting because of it, but uh, anyway, not not a huge deal for me. I just thought I'd point it out. So yeah, so this is Gore. I think he's pretty great. I actually, I, I really like this character, and I really like this figure. Like, it's a really simple kind of design. Like, you can take this cape thing off, which I'll do in a second when I swap heads. And once you take that off, he's just some weird naked alien guy. You know, there's not a whole lot to him, but... Even though he doesn't have a whole lot of sculpted detail on his body, similar to the last two figures that we talked about, you know, he does have some pretty unique, like, feet and stuff. Like, you can't use those for just any character. Um, on his body, I don't think there's a whole lot. Like, you could probably reuse this torso and these arms. In fact, they probably are reused from some other figure. Although, I don't know, that looks like there might be some unique sculpted on the, his back. Like, the way his spine is kind of protruding there. Um, another thing I guess I'll quickly mention about the box, again, doesn't bother me a whole lot, but I know some people were a little annoyed that when this figure was first announced and they showed 
the uh, basically the concept figure, the prototype that you see on the packaging. It looks a lot like this, so it's not like necessarily false advertising as far as the design or the paint. But the box shows a figure with no pins there, which is you know pretty common now in modern figures. They call them pinless, where you don't see these two uh, little circles, you know, on the opposite sides of a joint. But uh, then you open the figure up and you see that he does have pins. So the image was clearly photoshopped on the box. On the box. So yeah, that might be kind of annoying to some people, but by no means a deal breaker for me. So yeah, this face sculpt, I really like it. I'm not sure which one I'm going to display him with on my shelf. I can see how some people might uh, see Voldemort when they look at this head. However, I, I only watched one Harry Potter movie. I'd, I'm not a fan, so my mind doesn't immediately jump to Voldemort when I see this. But uh, I really like his weird alien head design. Um, if you weren't sure who we were talking about, when I said Bib Fortuna, here he is. So this is a Star Wars character from Return of the Jedi. So there was there's multiple of these guys. The species is called Twi'lex in the Star Wars universe now. These, uh, I don't know what you'd call them, gross appendages that grow out of their head. So... Yeah, when you see gore, it's definitely kind of reminiscent of the Twi'leks from Star Wars. But uh, anyway, I like it. I like the pink job, how they've got this kind of weird little pinkish color to them when they get to the bottom. I don't really know what that's all about. And then for the paintwork on his body, you see he's just got some random... He's kind of got like little bikini briefs and then some of these other little black kind of goo dripping around him. Um, anyway, let's change out the parts here for a sec. So you can pop off this head like so and then this slides right off so now you see he's just a naked alien guy and he, he came with one extra hand which is kind of odd most figures come with a pair of extra hands but this guy here he's just got you see one of his hands has got the necro sword which is kind of like growing right out of his hand the ooze just forms right into the sword so i really like that look i'm definitely going to display him this way but if for some reason you didn't want to you could just pop that out and then he came with one other kind of open hand to kind of match the other one that he's got there. So we can just pop that in there like so. And then here is the other head, which, you know, it's still, I think it's another great head. It looks, it still looks like Voldemort, I guess, but it doesn't look like uh, Bib Fortuna so much anymore because you don't see the, uh, the head tentacles on this one. I don't know where they go when he puts his hood on. Presumably, I guess they're all tucked inside of there. But yeah, they're both really nice head sculpts. Really creepy eyes and stuff with that digital paintwork. Anyway, I'm really pleased with this figure. I think he's pretty awesome. So yeah, that's Gore. Okay, so three more figures to show you. Now, I actually haven't even opened these guys up yet, which doesn't happen very often for me. Usually when I get a toy, I come home and I take some pictures of it in the package and I shoot a little bit of video of it in the package just so I can have that in the bank. It might be weeks before I actually do my review of it, but I, I shoot that stuff right away because I want to open the stuff up. But uh, so GameStop called me the other day and they told me they had, um, I think this was when they had my Dusty figure in or something. So they called me and they said what they had one of my pre-orders in. And uh, I was like, okay, I'll come in tomorrow to get it. And then they called me the next day before I had a chance to come in and they said one of your X-Men figures came in. And I said, okay, did the other X-Men figures come in by chance? Because I had four of them pre-ordered. And they're like, no, just the one. And I was like, okay. So I show up at GameStop at the end of my workday. And he comes out with a stack of stuff for me. So he's got, like, my G.I. Joe. He's got four, like, or three X-Men for me. So he's, I didn't get one of them. He's Dark Phoenix. So I didn't get her. But he gave me my three X-Men. And he gave me that Transformer that I talked about in the last episode here, Grim Skull. So I got him. And he also gave me the, uh, you know, that two-pack with Snake Eyes and Timber, the wolf. Yeah. Which I previously passed on. And I was thinking, like, do I buy this now? It's in my hand. Because I originally had a pre-order online and I canceled the pre-order. Which is easier to do when it's kind of, like, out of sight than mine. But, like, when you're physically holding it. But I was buying, okay, so I'm buying, like, five or six toys here. Plus I was picking up your thing and I was like... I think I'm going to hold off on Snake Eyes. But these are the three X-Men that I got. So I'm going to go with her. First off, I'll go with Longshot. 
So, Chad, you should be familiar with Longshot because I've talked to him a few times before. Yep. So this is a character. I've liked him since he first appeared in the 80s. I've wanted a figure of him. Um, and they announced a while back that they were doing a three-pack. Yes. With Dazzler, Longshot, and Mojo. Mojo. And it was expensive, and I didn't know if I wanted to buy it because I couldn't justify it. Like, the price of the figures just didn't work out mathematically. I'm like, that's more than they would be if they were individually mm-hmm. sold. And then before I even had to really worry about it, they sold Mojo separately, so I bought Mojo. And then they put up Longshot separately, so I bought Longshot. So the only one I'm missing is Dazzler. and So now I'm just not going to get that pack. Um, unless I find it for like a gigantic discount someday for like, you know, 75% off or something. Um, so yeah, I got Mojo and now I have Longshot. So this is a slightly different deco than the one it would have been in the uh, multi-pack. I think I like the multi-pack one better, but, uh, he's not an absolute favorite character of mine that it matters that much. I'm just happy I've got a, this is a decent figure. Yeah, he's got some representation in my collection and it's a good figure. Um, one of the, just... I haven't opened him yet. By the time I do the insert shot, I will have opened him, so I'll show you guys close up what he looks like. But this is a kind of a, a very like light-hearted character. And you see just on his artwork on the packaging, he's got this little smirk. Um, I'm going to say something. He reminds me of Billy from Stranger Things. Yep. Yeah, I <laughs> could see that. Um, Anyways, yes. I'm but I was going to say, he looks... His, the expression looks kind of stern and not very long shot like on the pack. Like the toy looks a little more, a little gruffer than I would expect for a long shot. I don't know, but he's he's a cool character. I can't tell. He only has one. One of the weird features of him is he only has three fingers. You can see on the package. Yeah, right? I don't know if they sculpted. Him. I'm assuming they probably got that right, but it's hard to tell because his hands are kind of sculpted in fists. I, okay, well that open hand you can see it right there. He's only got the three fingers. So he is, he is an alien character. He's from, like, another planet. Um, and, yeah, he was, he's a fun character. He kind of came about, he joined the X-Men right around the era when I was first getting into comic books when I was, like, eight, nine years old. And uh, so I don't know, you know, how high he ranks in importance for the whole X-Men lore because there's so many X-Men characters. But to me, personally, he ranks up there pretty high because... You know, it's like when you watch the uh, original Star Wars movie, A New Hope, and Luke Skywalker. You know, you, you need a character like him to understand the universe that you're being introduced to because he's you're seeing things through his eyes and stuff. So when I when we started reading X Men comic books when we were kids, me and my brother, Longshot and Dazzler and Psylocke were like being integrated into the team, and they were kind of like, "Oh my God, what's this? You have a danger room? Oh, you have a jet?" And so like they were kind of those characters for us that kind of helped us into the world a little bit. So they, uh, yeah. That's why I have a kind of an attachment to this guy. I think he's kind of cool. Um, I don't know too much about him. I, I know of him from you. Um, I did pre-order that Wolverine somewhere, though. I can't remember where. And did you see the two three-packs that are coming out? I didn't. So, of this wave of figures, so if you see the ones on the back, I ordered four of the six of them. So Can I take a guess at which ones? Yeah. Well, it's not too hard. You already know. Uh, <laughs> well, <coughs> so Dark Phoenix. Yep. Multiple Man. No. Nope. Ooh, okay. So there you go. <laughs> You're done, I guess. Cause, yeah. Um, so the thing is, with uh, of the six figures, so I'm going to show you. I've got three of them here. Dark Phoenix I also pre-ordered, which I'm glad because, you know what sucks is this Dark Phoenix, and it's a really, really nice figure. It is. And... It was available before in darker, probably better colors than this. This one's more cartoony, bright red, but it was done in more of a darker, deep maroon kind of red. I like that, though. But, yeah. yeah. But it was in a two-pack with Cyclops. And it was an exclusive, I think, to... It might have even been exclusive to Toys R Us back in the day when Toys R Us still existed in the United States. Mm -hmm. But we had them up here in, in Canada... And you know, sometimes when you see they have those exclusive packs, like they have that one with like the Mandarin and and Gwyneth Paltrow yep. and stuff, and they have so many of them, and like nobody wants these figures, and they're sitting there, and they keep marking them down more and more and more and more. They had probably two rows, probably about ten deep, of that Cyclops and Phoenix pack for months, years ago, and I wasn't super all in on the Marvel Legends yet, and I already had a Cyclops, mm-hmm. and I thought, well, I don't need Phoenix, I'd rather get. Jean Grey in her more neutral, like her Jean Grey mm-hmm. costume. I don't really need the two of them. 
But in the years since, I've become like a much more of a completist with Marvel Legends, and now I want Jean Grey and Phoenix, her two different identities. Um, and that pack sells for so much on the secondary market now, and like I could have bought the two pack probably for twenty bucks at like well, so many times. I went in there and I saw it like dirt cheap, like fifty percent off, you know, Mark, you know, and. Then I would go on eBay and people were selling for like three hundred dollars. You're like, fuck! Why didn't I buy that then? And I don't care about the Cyclops, but I regretted not getting that Dark Phoenix. And so now they're repackaging it. So yeah, I'm looking forward to getting that figure. She, I might even get her before the end of the year. You know, GameStop could call me tomorrow and say she, she showed up. Tender? She might be. Um, and then Wolverine, the one you just said you pre-ordered, I passed on because I already have Wolverine in his. Yellow outfit, his brown outfit, his black and gray outfit. I like Wolverine in his mask. That's the unmasked Wolverine in his, like, trainee costume or whatever you want to call it. I don't really like that look on him. But anyway, when I mentioned three packs, if if you like the X-Men on that set, they have another three pack with Gambit, Jubilee, and I think Storm, and then another one with Banshee, Forge, and I don't know who else. So there's like six more X-Men in the matching blue and yellow. So if you got that Wolverine, you could have a nice little team of X-Men in their matching outfits. I do, I do like Jubilee, and I am a fan of Gambit. I know you don't like Gambit. but Well, I'm not a huge X-Men guy in general. Yeah. Gambit and Jubilee are not favorites of mine, <laughs> but I do have them both in my collection yeah. already in their more unique costumes, mm-hmm. which I would rather have everybody in their unique costume rather than their cohesive team costume. Yeah. So... Getting these characters redone in team costumes doesn't do anything for me. Um, and then Multiple Man. I am a fan of Multiple, Multiple Man, the character. I already have one. Now, mind you, if these figures were still, you know, 25 bucks, I would buy another Multiple Man because he multiplies. So it's not, like, it's not, an exact, it's not the exact same figure as this one. The other one had a trench coat on and stuff. So I could definitely justify having two Multiple Men in my display. But now that these figures are like 40 plus dollars... I don't need another multiple man that bad. So I didn't pre-order him. You stole my joke. I was going to say then you could have multiple men. I could. But, so, sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. It was corny. Um, yeah, I mean, I think this is cool. Uh, like I said, I don't know too much about him. But uh, I think it's kind of a neat, yeah. neat figure. So I don't know if you ever read any multiple man comic books, but... What's cool about him is, like, they've used him in the live-action movie a little bit, but yeah. it's a very little effect and stuff. But uh, he's a character, and he when he, he can multiply as much as he wants, and he calls those characters his dupes, dupes his duplicates. Yeah. And his dupes go out, and they live whole lives, and they have all these experiences, and then they come back, and they just, like, boop, go back together, and he gets the, all those experiences. He gets he all ab- their He absorbs them yeah. and stuff. It's kind of a neat power. Uh, so he's a cool character. But that's not my... Prefer- like, this is him in his, like, unitard. I liked him. His name is Jamie Madrox, his non-superhero name. I liked him when he was kind of just lost the... He, he used to wear, like, a trench coat and took his little onesie off, and he was just more civilian gear. That's kind of... I prefer that version of Madrox than the onesie multiple man. But, uh... Anyway. You want to look at these last two figures? Sure. So this is Avalanche. So you can see him, like, he's got the purple packaging as opposed to long shots in the orange. And this is accurate to the old 90s figures from Toy Biz, you know, based on the old animated cartoon. The villains came purple, good guys orange. Um, it's got that cool artwork. I'll do an insert again so you can see a closer shot of the packaging. Uh, just a little bit on the back. But uh, do you know anything about this guy? I do not. Um... I never really read the X Men comics. Yeah. Just watched the animated series, so I'm trying to remember him. He's a character that I think a lot of people have wanted for many, many years. I've wanted him too, but he's not a favorite. Of mine. Like I couldn't tell you much about him at all either. Like his powers, I, I think he might be able to control the Earth or something, but he might just be strong too. I can't even remember. Like his com- his costume is so like bland and nondescript it's kind of like moonstone in that he has no logo yeah. and it's like it's like they weren't really trying that hard when they came up with him i think for me his face is just too plain like um you'll do an insert there but like i wish they would have made it 
resemble the artwork a little like bit. A it sneer. just it yeah, it looks like he's just squinting and he's Yeah, and know. nothing the helmet looks goofy. Like yeah. he kinda looks more like if you watched the Peacemaker show yeah. and how John Cena's helmet, it's almost like intended to be comical. Yeah. That's kinda how this one fits him. Where if you look at the artwork, it's the same style helmet, but it's not comical there. Like it kind of fits him much better yeah. on the artwork. So I kinda wish they made his helmet a little cooler. It looks kind of goofy. So, like, that figured... I don't think that bodes well for him in my uh, next countdown video. Of the yeah, the, the face is definitely a turnoff for the uh, figure as a whole for me. Like, it, Yeah. But him, again, correct me if I'm wrong, because there are people out there that are huge X-Men fans. I am a very, very casual and very removed from current X-Men storylines. Like, I haven't really read comics of, with the X-Men for decades, really. I was, like, an 80s X-Men guy. But I don't think Avalanche was necessarily like a bad dude. Um, so he, he was a part of the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, mm -hmm. which implies he's a pretty bad guy. Mm -hmm. But then he was later part of the team Freedom Force. Yes. Which was kind of like a government-sanctioned mutant hunting team. Now, they were still bad guys. It was kind of like the Thunderbolts. They were like bad guys pretending to be good guys. So it was him and Pyro and Blob and Mystique. Um so, yeah, kind of the comic books I was reading back in the day in the 80s, he was part of Freedom Force, not so much the Brotherhood. Um, anyway, so he's a character I remember from my youth. I don't know what he's doing now, if he's a good guy or a bad guy or what, but, yeah, I don't think he was ever a particularly evil character. He was just kind of, like, following orders. Yeah, but he's all right. I'm glad I got him. Yeah. He's a unique character. All these guys are, like, long shot. Avalanche, Moonstone, Gore. These are all characters that I did not have in my collection before. Mm -hmm. And even though I don't play with my toys, every time I get a new character like this, there's that little part of the little kid inside of me that was, is just like jumping for joy, thinking like, if, if I had these toys when I was a kid, I would have been so stoked. Like, I had G.I. Joe's when I was a kid. I had He-Man when I was a kid. But when I was a kid, I was huge into Marvel comic books and you just couldn't get Marvel toys. Like, they didn't exist. And when you did find them, like some of the uh, Secret Wars figures and stuff... They weren't they the were, greatest. And there was like 20 to choose from. Mm -hmm. So we're talking the Fantastic Four, the Avengers, boom. There you go. You get the whole... That's it. But now it's like to get characters like Avalanche and Gore and like these weird little Speedball, Sleepwalker, other characters that I got this year. I'm getting all these weird random corners of the Marvel Universe and I would have loved to have played with these toys when I was a kid. So... Just getting a new character, putting them in my collection, it brings me that little bit of joy. Even if it's not a stellar figure, I just, uh, you know. It's I'm, satisfying. They're, it's always great getting new toys. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, I'd, I'd say I'd like Longshot more out of the two of these. Yeah. But we'll see if you feel the same way I do. This last one, I think, is going to be give some of these other toys a run for their money. And this is a character I never liked as a kid. Um, she, I don't think she was ever drawn I don't know I don't know what it was <coughs> Is it, she, just, she just didn't appeal to me when I was a kid and she was in all those Capcom games mm -hmm. so that's how a lot of people might have been exposed to her um, but anyway this is Spiral, Spiral and I think the figure looks awesome but yeah like they did have some of these six armed figures in Marvel Legends before the six armed Spider-Man from the issue when he mutated himself yep. and then they did the doppelganger spider-man which is like his evil clone with all the arms and they um like i don't think they pulled it off very well like there was no torso articulation to account for the extra arms and stuff i'll have to do a baby a comparison i'll have to bring up my doppelganger spider-man but here it looks like they fixed all that like she's got torso articulation and the way her arms are all connected it's not like all down her side really awkwardly they all seem to come from her El like from yeah. her, her shoulder, and uh, yeah, it looks like it works really well. I don't, I don't know how it'll look once I open her up and take her out of the package, but like, it'd be kind of cool. But I think she looks great. Uh, I think it looks like the play functionality of her will work well, and she's got all these accessories. Like she has a weapon for each of her six hands, um, and she just where these guys, these a lot of these figures I've been showing you, their biggest weak spot is they're bland. Like Loki, his. Chainmail is just painted on. There's not. There's no texture to it. You know, Moonstone. She looks like an egg. You know, Avalanche. Boring costume. Like you can't say she's boring. Like she's got 
the samurai helmet, the furry yeah. boots, the six arms, the bionic arm, the sword. Like she's, she's cool. She's got a lot going on. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited about that figure. Yeah, like all those arms are double jointed elbows yeah. and stuff. Which I don't even does she have that? Yeah, I guess so. Because a lot of I found once they started giving the characters double jointed elbows, which means instead of just being able to bend them like this, it was like two joints of their arms could reach yeah. back and touch their shoulders. They they would do it for all the male characters, but they weren't doing it on the female figures for a long time, usually because I think their arms are skinnier and adding that extra joint made them a little bit more fragile. But like Moonstone does have the extra joints, so you can get her arms a really good range of motion there. Um, but the fact that they did that on all six of Spiral's arms. Yeah, that's incredible. Because that probably does add to the cost of the figure. Every time you have to use a different piece for the mold. So the fact that each of her arms would have been like at least four pieces each for each of those arms, plus the accessory for each arm. Like, I'm kind of surprised they didn't charge me an extra 15 bucks and say she's a deluxe figure. Like, you get a lot of bang for your buck for this. Just elevates the figure so much more that you're able to do that. Um, out of the three here, this is probably my favorite. Yeah. Spiral. Yeah. So let's take a closer look at all of these X-Men figures. We're going to start with Longshot. So this guy looks pretty good. Um... I mentioned before I was really torn on whether I would need to buy this figure because I was thinking about buying the three pack. Um, ultimately, you know, I kind of did the cost analysis and it made more sense for me to buy the single carded figures. And even just the other day, like since me and Chad sat down to film on the 12th, as I sit down and film these insert shots, it's a few days later. Um, so in between, I had went to my local GameStop and they actually had the three pack on their shelf, which is the first time I had seen it. Now, I couldn't actually look at the figures inside because it's in one of Hasbro's new sealed boxes. So it was just the artwork I could look at. But I was thinking that the long shot had a different head sculpt. And I think it, it looked to me like it had a superior head sculpt on the, uh, the Mojo pack set. However, I kind of came home and researched it. And I found that they actually do have the exact same head sculpt, which makes me feel a little bit better about it. Um... When you see the prototype images of Longshot when they first showed him online, it to me at least it looks like he has more of a smile on the Mojo set. But uh, from reviews I've seen online, that's not the case. It's maybe just looks that way in the digital prototype that they originally showed. So uh, yeah, the only differences that have been pointed out to me online is that the color of the brown accessories is a little bit darker on the other figure. The star logo on his uh, jacket is white instead of yellow. And then the biggest difference is the, uh, the multi-pack long shot doesn't have this glow effect painted on his eye. So he just has two standard like blue eyes. Um, I don't really have a preference one way or the other. I think I probably like the non-sparkle effect better. But, you know, that is kind of one of long shots calling cards. If memory serves... Um, whenever he used his good luck powers to kind of alter the odds, that's when his eye would twinkle like that. So this this version here is kind of showing him using his powers where the other one would just be kind of standard long shot. But anyway, he looks pretty good for, you know, for long shot, I think. I would prefer a bit of a smile on him. But, you know, depending on the angle, it actually does kind of look like maybe he has a bit of a smirk. I think maybe his eyebrow being down makes him look a little bit angrier. But... I don't know. It's kind of subjective. He's got that classic mullet, which, you know, is a ridiculous haircut. But that is how Longshot styled his hair back in the day. I'm not sure how he wears it in the comic books now. But regardless, this is the version I would have wanted. Because this is the one uh, I remember from my childhood. You know, the outfit. So this guy, unlike all the other figures we talked about, he clearly has an outfit that's sculpted for him. Like, he's got that... You can see there's a crease for his boots, and he's even got this little extra buckle on there. So you couldn't just reuse these boots for Captain America because they gave that specific effect for him. He's got lots of little things kind of added on to the basic body. So he's got this sheath with a knife in there that comes out. He's got all these pouches, enough to make Rob Liefeld proud. Then he's got his uh, bandolier full of little knives. He's got a little satchel. I assume this is probably the same satchel we got with Green Goblin and stuff, but I don't know. It might be unique sculpt. And, uh, yeah, then the head sculpt, he's got the collar there with the zipper. Again, that's all pretty unique to long shot. I don't think there's too many other characters that have a popped collar like this. Um, and then just all, like, the wrinkles throughout the costume and stuff. It just all gives him a much more real effect 
than the Moonstone and the Loki. Um, so yeah, I really dig it. Now uh, you'll notice Longshot's got three fingers. That's his uh, another kind of calling card of Longshot. It's almost kind of creepy looking when you see those hands. Now for accessories, all Longshot had was a couple of extra hands. So he had, I believe, a I, th I think this is his hand, closed fist there. And then he had this hand here, which has got his little knife blades between his fingers. So no, he doesn't have claws like Wolverine, but what he would do is he would grab these little daggers from off of his bandolier, put them between his fingers and like throw them in groups of three. And using his good luck powers, he could usually hit his mark pretty spot on. So that's kind of cool, but I think I like the uh, the open hand there, just because it really shows off his very unique you know, hand design with those three fingers. So yeah, pretty cool figure. I like him. Uh, I think the only long shot in my collection that I really have to compare to is this three and three quarter inch one from the Marvel Universe line from a couple years ago. So you can definitely see the similarities. You know, he's got the bandolier along with the satchel. He's got the same, you know, three fingered open hand. This one does not have the star on the eye, but popped collar, all that sort of stuff. So this was a pretty good figure. I was happy with it for the three and three quarter inch line, but uh, I think this one is better. It, uh, I think the head sculpt is just more true to long shot. He always seemed kind of elfish. And this guy here, I don't really get that elfish look. This guy looks like, you know, plus the mullet isn't as pronounced. It's not as specific to, to, uh, to long shot. Well, this here is a very much a long shot mullet from the 80s. And he's got a little bit more of that elfishness to him. So, yeah, pretty cool. So next up here is Avalanche. And I'm, I'm pretty pleased with this figure too. It's a little bland, which seems to be a bit of a theme here today. A lot of these figures are a little bland. Um, but that's okay. That's what the character looked like in the comic books. So again, I can't fault Hasbro for giving me a bland figure when it's based on a pretty bland character design. Now, I think Avalanche has had some tweaks on his costumes over the years. Like, I seem to recall he probably had an A on his belt or on his chest at some point. Um, but whatever. This is the look that I think of when I think of Avalanche. Blue and silver, bucket helmet. That's pretty much it. So yeah, it's pretty hard to complain. Um, he didn't come with any accessories other than a couple of extra hands. So you see, I've got him with his closed fists, which makes sense for me because I think this guy was a bit of a bruiser, kind of the tough guy on the team, but he does have these open hands as well. So you can give him those if you prefer or one of each, but, uh, yeah, so there's the head sculpt. So it almost looks like the helmet could come off because it's, it's sculpted separate from the head, but you know, it, it doesn't, I'm sure well, I'm not sure, but you could probably pry this off with an X-Acto knife or something. I don't know what he would look like underneath there. I doubt it would just be a smooth, bald head sculpt. Uh, it might be like all hollowed out and might seem kind of creepy or something. I don't know. But uh, I'm not going to attempt to remove it. Um, you know, his expression, he looks grumpy. But I think he could maybe stand to look a little a little angrier, a little more evil. I don't know. It's it's a pretty neutral expression. Again, I don't, I don't love the lips. They're a little too pink. Um, I do like the silver plastic they used. I don't know if it really comes through on the camera, but rather than just be kind of a flat plastic, it's kind of marbled. So you can sort of see like a swirly color within the silver. And that carries through throughout all the silver parts. So it just gives it a little bit more, I don't know, depth or something. Like the blue is pretty flat, but it's fine. It's very comic booky. But yeah, I like that the color of the, of the silver they used. It just adds a little bit more spice to them. So anyway, that's Avalanche. Not too shabby. And lastly, we have Spiral. So here you can see I've got her all geared up. So in order to do that, I had to give her the gripping hands. Now she only came with two additional hands, which is kind of weird. You'd think maybe they'd give you six additional hands. But uh, it's really not necessary. Like I think she's already pretty souped up and as I mentioned I think you get a lot of bang for your buck considering she's a basic like basically priced figure um, but she did have two extra hands so she's got this one kind of like open or no you know that's that's long shots other hand so that's what I wasn't sure about when I pulled out long shots hand I was like is are these both his but yeah this is clearly long shots because it's only got three fingers so so there you go 
So I think Spiral only had the one extra hand. This is clearly hers. It's a little silver hand. Now you might be thinking that could be Avalanche's, but it's not. It's got the uh, kind of the banding on the hand, which matches her arm, the way it's kind of got those banded metal strips running down it. So the one extra hand. So I guess with her cybernetic arm, which is presumably her stronger arm, she could have a punching hand. So you can do that if you want. But I prefer to armor up with all of these weapons because I don't think she can store them otherwise. Um, she's got a few pouches on her belt, but she doesn't have any sheaths or you know anything like that for the swords. So anyway, she is pretty great. Like I really like the head sculpt there. She looks really nice. The helmet is part of the sculpt, so you can't remove that, which is fine. I don't recall ever even seeing what she looks like without the helmet on. Um, and yeah, otherwise, like the, the fur on the boots looks nice. I think the belt is fine. I don't read a lot of comics with her, so I, I don't know if that's... I assume that's obviously comic book accurate, but I have seen some people posting online that when they get this figure, they're taking the belt off of their old Hasbro or their old uh, Toy Biz Marvel Legends spiral because she had a bigger silver belt and people seem to think that's uh, an improvement. So I don't know, maybe the big silver belt is more comic book accurate or probably more accurately as she wore that at one point in the comic books. Now she wears something more like this. So I guess whatever. If you have the old version and you might want to mix and match them, that's just an idea that I've seen online. But I don't have any other spirals in my collection, so I can't do any comparisons or mix and matches. And this is how she's going to stay. Now for the swords, she's got um, four of these. I think they're all identical, kind of katanas, I think those would be. But those are really nice. So you get four identical ones of those. And then she's got this one gold sword. Now, you'll have to forgive my ignorance, but I don't know what the significance of this is. Um, I assume she probably carries a sword like that. Same as this axe. Um, I don't know if it's something that she just maybe had once or twice, and the design team decided to give her these weapons just to, you know, add a little diversity. Um, or if those are like really common weapons and they have some significance, I don't know. But uh, yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, now as for the articulation, so I meant to grab one of my other six armed figures, which I forgot to, but maybe I'll run and do that in a second here. But you can see that she still has the standard Marvel Legends articulation, like she twists at the, uh, kind of the mid torso she can go forward and backwards and side to side all the arms you see how they plug in they're all like right around the same spot they all come out right around there so they don't look unnatural or anything well they look as natural as anybody can look i guess with six arms i think it works pretty well i, I haven't had a chance to play with her much but like if you want to put all of her arms down it's a little awkward when she's holding all of her swords but you can see how you can kind of move them around. Let me see. Yeah, I don't know. They move well. They're all double jointed elbows. You know, you can attack from behind, all that sort of stuff. Pretty cool. I don't have a whole lot more to say, but I'm going to go grab my doppelganger figure just so we can do a little comparison. So here you see doppelganger Spider-Man. And right around the same time that this figure came out, they also put out a six-armed Spider-Man figure from you know a period in time when he was mutating further into a spider um i didn't buy that mutating spider-man figure because it was just a little too specific it's based off of one issue out of thousands or one episode of the cartoon if you prefer um so it was just a little too specific and it didn't seem like a figure i needed however doppelganger was his own character um he was around for quite a while all through the maximum carnage line and the infinity war crossover anyway so you can see with this guy most Marvel Legends have some sort of joint here, but he doesn't. It's just a solid torso, so there's no ab crunch at all. And you can see how all the arms, they kind of pop out from his entire side. So his lowest arms are coming out right below his belt line, which is kind of freaky. Like, it's not... Like, this is a creepy-looking kind of monstery character anyway, so it's not as weird. But it would be kind of weird where Spiral is basically human in anatomy if she had arms poking out right at her hips. That might seem a little strange and gross and how do you get dressed and all that sort of stuff. How she is designed there makes a lot more sense for her and I really like it. Whereas Doppelganger, um, you know, this is what I was worried that if they ever made a spiral figure that they would do it like this and I think it would look a little strange. So anyway, I think Spiral is pretty successful. Um, it's a character that I don't have a ton of attachment to. 
but just based on the quality of this figure um yeah i think it's probably one of my favorite marvel legends released this year okay well um i'm not sure this might be my last video before christmas um so if it is merry christmas merry christmas yeah um but you'll definitely see me before new year's because i'll probably be posting a video after christmas to show you all the new christmas stuff i got um but who knows it is only the 12th maybe i'll be back with another one before then um like i said if my box from big bad toy store that i've got in the mail right now shows up earlier earlier than expected like shows up next week monday or something maybe i'll do another video of that um but anyway yeah you got anything else I don't think so. Um, I guess, yeah. it's uh, It's been fun going through these toys with you over the last couple months. and Yeah. Well, yeah. We'll do more in 2023. Absolutely. All right. So, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next video whenever that happens to be. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you like, comment. That's kind of a vague point. Subscribe. Sorry. It's all going to be in one box. It's right here. So it's okay. Just... Like. Comment and subscribe. See, where are you pointing at, though? Where are you pointing out to the distance? It's here. Look where that Snake Mountain guy is. Like, it'll be right around in here. Okay. Like, comment, subscribe. Yep. We love comments. Yep. Love talking about your toys. What did you What did you not like in this episode? Yep. Share, share your thoughts below. Like, comment. We'll see you next time. Ciao. Keep collecting. <laughs>